What is overloading? When it comes to the concept of overloading, forcefully we are trying to change the meaning of C ash operator. I can do two types of overloading. One is method overloading, another one is operator overloading. If you guys are able to perform the operation with two operands, then I will call that as a binary operator. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session in the CASH. So guys, yes, we have gathered here to understand the concept of operator overloading. What exactly operator overloading, sir? Yes, before discussing that, let's check what do I have in the agenda. So guys, I will be discussing what is overloading and also I will be discussing the types of overloading along with that. Operator overloading is a topic which I'm going to discuss with all of you in this session without wasting much of your time. Let's get into the session. So guys, what is overloading? When it comes to the concept of overloading, forcefully we are trying to change the meaning of C ash operator. Say for example, I have plus, okay? Can I call this as an operator? Yes, I can call this as an operator. I will be changing the meaning of this operator. That process is what I will be calling it as a overloading. All right, so this is what you need to remember as of now. So the next one that I have is operator overloading. Yes, I have already discussed what exactly operator overloading is all about. But you need to understand one more important thing when it comes to the overloading. I can do two types of overloading. One is method overloading, another one is operator overloading. So that's what you need to remember here. Method overloading in the sense what? Let me just give you a brief uh, introduction to this because we have already discussed. Okay, so method overloading in the sense you will have more than one method. Okay, you will have more than one method with the same name, different number of parameters and different types of parameters. That is what I will call it as a method overloading. So we have understood that. The second one is operator overloading. As I told you, if you guys are changing the meaning of the existing operator which we have in the CH, so that is what I will call it as a operator overloading. So fine, we got a basic idea about uh, what is overloading. When it comes to overloading, we have two types. One is method, another one is operator overloading. So fine, we have already discussed this. So let's understand types of operator overloading. How many types do we have? We have two types of operator overloading. So I'm not discussing method overloading now. I'm discussing, I'm focusing on operator overloading. Please remember that. So when it comes to the operator overloading, we have unary operator overloading and we have binary operator overloading. Unary in the sense one, can you guys tell me what exactly unary in the sense? If you guys are able to perform the operation with one operand, I repeat one operand, so that I will call it as a unary operator. If you guys are able to perform the operation with two operands, then I will call that as a binary operator. If you guys are changing the meaning of the operator, that is unary operator, then I will call it as a unary operator overloading. If you guys are trying to change the meaning of the binary operator, then you guys are performing the binary operator overloading. That's what you need to remember. Now, it's time for all of us to understand which are all the operators that I can overload and which, can, which I cannot overload. That's what you need to remember now. So I have listed out some of the operator which I can overload in the CH. So guys, all this operator, binary arithmetic, unary arithmetic, binary bitwise, unary bitwise, logical operator, all these operators, I can change the meaning. But when it comes to this category, especially conditional operator, when it comes to the conditional operator, ampersand and R, logical and and R, I cannot change, I cannot perform the overloading is what you need to remember. In the same way, I have the operators like this, observe here, shorthand operator. So I cannot change the meaning for this operator, size of new square brackets, parenthesis, all this operators, I will not be able to change the meaning. So which means what? These operators, I cannot use it for operator overloading. But I can use this for operator overloading is what you need to remember. All right, this is the different types of operators that I have in C ash where I can perform the operator overloading and I cannot perform the operator overloading. This is the clear idea that you should have. Cool, moving forward to the next topic that we have. How do I? perform operator overloading. So you should know the syntax to define the method which performs the operator overloading. What is the syntax? So first of all, you have to write the modifier. 
Okay, so first of all, you have to write the modifier. Then you have to mention the type, return type, what type of value that you are returning from this method is what you have to specify. And then followed by you have to use the keyword called operator. And then you have to mention which operator you are trying to overload. You have to mention that operator here. And then as usual, so you will be passing the arguments. And this is the modi of that particular method. So this is what the syntax that you have to use if you want to perform the operator overloading. Sir, we did not understood this. Uh, could you please explain with an example? Yes, I'm here. Let me take up an example to explain this. So guys, consider this program which performs unary operator overloading. Okay, so what exactly that I have? Observe here, I have a class. Can you identify the name of the class? Yes, the name of the class is space. So fine, we all know that. And I have declared three variables, that is x, y, z of type integer. That's what you need to observe here. So fine. And then what is this? Next, I have one more method. So what type of method is? This is a normal method. Observe, is this a normal method? What is the name of the method then? So space. Somewhere I read space, right? So what is that? Oh, class name. Class name and method name is same. So if both the methods are same, so guys, both the names, class as well as method is same. Then what do I call that as? It is a constructor method. All right, why do we use the constructor method? Automatically, whenever I create the object for this class, the value of this will get initialized. So cool. So it is doing its job. There is no new thing in this. We have already studied. Moving forward to the next one. So we have one more method. This is a normal method. So the name of the method is display. Whatever I have here, I will be printing it. So I'm using console.write, okay? So I'm printing x, y, z. All the values I'm printing, so one line blank. Cool, so there is no new thing here also. What is that I have to observe here? This is where I have the method which overloads the operator. Cool, observe here. Guys, you had the modifier. What is the modifier here? So guys, public is the modifier. Public static should be there if you guys are defining the operator overloading method. So without this keyword, you cannot have the method to overload operator. That's what you need to remember. So fine, cool. Then observe, this is the written value. So what type are you returning the value? So you are returning the type as space. My dear students, here you're creating a class called space. What is the meaning, sir? We did not understood. So we are returning the type of the value of space. What is the meaning? So could you please explain? Yes, observe here. So int a, right? So a is a variable of what type? So of int type. So observe here. I will create a class called space, okay? And I will create an object S1. So S1 is of what type? Of type space. So this is predefined data type and this space is user defined data type. So the space is user defined data type and this type of value I'm returning from this method is what you need to remember. Hope you understood. Right, so fine. The next, I have to use the keyword operator. Without that keyword, I cannot overwrite. All right, so what is the method? What is the operator that you're overloading? So guys, Minus is the operator which I'm trying to overload and I have the space, yes. Yes is an argument list. Yes is an object which I'm passing of type space. That's what you need to remember. Cool, how we write int a, observe. Do you all remember, right, int a. So we are passing a variable of type int, right? So in the same way, I'm passing a variable object. I'll not call it as a variable, I will call it as an object of type space is what you need to remember, right? So find then after that, observe here very carefully. What exactly that I'm trying to do? So guys, yes dot x, okay, is equal to, so I will be assigning this value. So minus yes dot x, minus yes dot y, minus yes dot z. So here observe here, you have x, y, z. So for all the values, I'm changing the meaning with minus, by just adding minus, that's it. I'm not doing anything else. So fine, this is what we are doing in the operator overloading. And then I will create, the object for this class and then I will uh, call this method s dot display so I will try to print the value when will I will I use the object to call this method no so what I will be using is minus s so this minus s will activate this method only then this will be executed if I don't have this I will not be able to execute this operator overloading method is what you need to remember at this point of time all right, then after that, I will be printing uh, the values after changing, after performing this operator overloading, what will happen is what I wanted to show you. So that's why I have one more time 
s dot display s dot display will display the value of x y z so observe here okay so you had 10 so i've changed it to minus 10 you have minus 20 i've changed it to plus 20 you have 30 and i've changed it to minus 30 this is how the operator overloading is happening and this is going to be the end of the session all right so hope you understood the concept of operator overloading and i'll be seeing you in the next class with some more concepts with respect to the operator overloading till then take care bye bye